Hello, everybody. I am going to talk about testing for narcissism. This is just going to be a brief overview, and we will be digging deeper into this. But I, here's my ultimate thing with narcissism. I really do feel like um, that to evolve <laughs> as society, we need to be able to recognize this. We need to be able to get people help who maybe experience this, but also help for people who are victims of this. So that, that's a part of this is just bringing more transparency and understanding to the world. And we have tests in the public domain that can measure uh, for narcissism. So again, briefly, I am going to recommend that I've got a, another brief video about the five factor model, sometimes called the big five. I like the acronym OCEAN, uh, perhaps being a Pisces, I like the OCEAN, but you can always remember that the the domains being measured here are openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, not defined as Carl Jung would have defined this. So it's really important to pay attention to this. Um, agreeableness and neuroticism. So those are the five domains. Under each one of these are facets uh, that are measuring different aspects of openness and conscientiousness. So my video goes into that, but let's look at it specifically with narcissism and even more specifically with vulnerable narcissism. A great article by Miller et al., and I will put that in the box below, uh, 2018, talked about uh, grandiose when they were actually measuring narcissism. So giving folks who experience this test to figure out where they score. Grandiose narcissism using the ocean or the five-factor model. What they found was that folks were higher in extroversion um, and a part of that is excitement seeking. That might be a domain that drives that, also activity. Uh, and again, we're going to dig deeper as we go. But a no is agreeableness, is low in agreeableness, which we're going to see in a minute, the, the facets that comprise agreeableness. But this is a profile. If I were given this test, I would look for high extroversion, low agreeableness. Clearly, we never use one test to label somebody. That's not what tests are for. They are to provide information if we're using it with a client or a victim to help process and let people make their own decisions. So we never want to use these to label. I, I've taught test and measurement for a long time and we don't want to do that. People are complex, issues are complex. All right, so for vulnerable narcissism and using the ocean to measure, we saw high neuroticism, okay? You didn't see that here with grandiose. And then low agreeableness, so that matches low agreeableness for both of the narcissisms, but uh, for both of the um, low agreeableness for both of the uh, narcissisms. Okay. But then uh, you had the high neuroticism. So experiencing anxiety, anger drives this, uh, depression, and so forth. So, and remember when we talk about high, low, we're using the five-factor model, it's um, kind of scored and scaled on a normal curve, meaning there will be folks lower in these attributes, people in the middle range, and then people higher. And we can actually talk about, hey, you know, if I was measuring this to, to screen for people who could be prospective counselors, since I work in a counseling uh, education program, you know, somebody two standard deviations above the mean uh, in uh, some of these scales in terms of the profile, that may be problematic. Now there's also another great article and I wanna share the screen. So let's see if we can do this successfully. Uh, I want you to look at this. Okay, so let's come here. And um, if we are looking, I'm gonna really expand this out and all this stuff here. So if we are looking at this, Lindman Whittager, 2001, use the five-factor model to create profiles for some of the personality disorders. I just have four of them listed right here, but they did it for all of the personality disorders. And we're seeing narcissistic here. And so I'm not gonna dive deep in because I'm gonna have to get into the individual questions for each of these to understand what exactly they're measuring. But with the, uh, the domain of neuroticism, we're seeing high anger and low self-conscious, meaning um, again, I'm going to have to dive into that and look at the questions to see how that relates to this narcissism. Uh, but you're looking at extroversion, low warmth, high assertiveness, and high excitement seeking. I think this one's significant, the excitement seeking. 
because um, somebody may get a rush out of, you know, we talk about narcissism with infidelity a lot, may get a rush out of planning the secrecy and being and lying about it and, you know, conning people and doing so forth. So that kind of makes sense. Low in feelings, I suspect this is kind of openness and awareness to emotions, but again, I'm gonna have to look closely. Higher in actions is gonna kind of maybe take action without thought, uh, you know, when, when something sounds good. Now look at agreeableness. We were talking about this. Look at the facets being measured. They were low in all of this. Now remember, we're just talking narcissism here, not grandiose versus vulnerable but you're looking low in trust, straightforwardness low, altruism, compliance, modesty, I suspect this is significant, tender-mindedness clearly are low on all of these categories, okay? Because it could be mid, they're not, they're not indicating the mid or high, but they're all low. And then we move to conscientiousness and nothing is um, outside the ordinary. So most of it was middle uh, in the middle ranges here. All right, so I know this was kind of brief, but I did want to give you some resources. The good thing about the five-factor model is there's different versions, but it is in the public domain. You can find versions in the public domain, meaning that you can use them once trained. Okay, you do need to be trained in assessment and diagnosis and how to do tests and measurement well. But this is uh, there are other good tests, you know, uh, the the MMPI or the um, the Milan Clinical Access, called the Mackey, are great for measuring this stuff, but they're, they're extensive, they're long, they're um, not in the public domain, so, so they're expensive to do and they're time consuming. But this is one, if I'm a counselor, if I'm a counselor educator, I wanna look further into so that I can help victims of narcissism, help people who are on the higher end of the scale of narcissism get help when they want it. All right. We will talk more. There will be more videos on this. Uh, thank you. And I am going to stop this if we can. And I'll see you next, next, or next video. Take care.